Uh, today I'm going to talk about one of the uh, the people that has been kind of doing really, really uh, kind of you know, getting attention on the internet. And that paper or that uh, breakthrough is called AI Scientist, correct? Uh, AI Scientist was uh, published uh, a few weeks back by a small research lab in Japan called Sakana AI. Uh, the folks come from a, again, from a large research organization uh, and then they started this uh, research lab in Japan. What I like about this uh, particular topic is that we have seen how AI has been kind of revolutionizing the industry, a different, different field out of it. And you see uh, a lot of different innovations or results come out every day. Uh, this particular model has this much of parameter, this particular uh, AI company has come up with uh, this application. But all of this thing is based on a one particular thing is that how strong is their research lab? How strong are sure. the people working in, in those organizations? Correct? And hence, this, the, this you can call that, that AI expertise is limited into those large organizations. But to me, uh, this paper kind of you now completely uh, changes that equation. It, 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 the paper basically talks about how you can automate scientific research process, right? So that means, so you can kind of use this model, Sranya, you can use this model and can kind of know, create or give it a, a sort of an, uh, a try to come up with a, another breakthrough uh, innovations in artificial intelligence. So let me tell you more about it. Let me share my screen. Uh, so that you can uh, also kind of you know, follow along with me what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Let me know if you can share my, if you can see my screen. A quick yes. Yes, uh, we can. Would be, okay. Wonderful. So this is the uh, a website. Uh, if you, let's say, if I just go to sakana.ai, correct? It is just one landing page which talks about their blog and careers page. And if you go to the blog, uh, they have a bunch of announcement. And the paper that I'm going to talk about is this one, the AI scientist towards fully automated, open-ended scientific discovery. Okay. So pretty interesting, correct? Right? So imagine uh, you are a technology company and, and you want to kind of uh, understand or kind of know, you understand AI a bit, but you also want to understand, okay, what are the next frontiers of this technology, correct? And to explore this, you really need uh, a people with that mindset, with that uh, expertise to be able to do that, correct? Building a product is one mindset where you think about problem space, solution space, how you kind of you know, go ahead and launch it, and some of those things. Research mindset on the other side is, is exploring completely different field altogether, correct? So it's a, that's why it's kind of you know, restricted to a particular community there. So in this, the Sakana AI team has kind of you know, created a framework of large language models, correct? So I want to kind of you know, jump into this particular thing. Yeah. So they've come up with a framework where they're using like, you know, multiple LLMs to be able to automate this scientific process. So let's say what happens in a traditional scientific process, correct? I worked at the research lab and uh, research scientists usually kind of start with understanding that, okay, how would I kind of, uh, you know, increase the uh, 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 translation capability of a, of a language. So let's say I have an English as a language and I want to translate English into one language or, or more than one language. Currently today, the way to kind of you know, do this translation is using a particular state of art method. But you really want to kind of you know, supercharge, you really want to kind of explore, are there better ways to do that, correct? So you start with the problem space and then you try to understand, okay, integrated, I mean, the architecture of that particular uh, translation model and then try to say, okay, what are the things you can kind of you know, change around? Then you come up with a hypothesis, that hypothesis, then you have to come up with a, a plan to experiment with your hypothesis, document the result, and then kind of you know, share it. In this one, 
all of those things they are doing the same process they follow the same process but it's been done by uh, large language models so they have three language three or uh, four large language models one llm is mostly used for uh, idea generation correct so let's say you kind of you know give them an a topic and and sort of kind of a template that the llm takes it as an input and then interactively brainstorms ideas with you so let's say a topic of i was talking about translation is one topic this okay or you want to kind of you know relook at translation approaches what are the kind of you know examples do you have in mind so you could say okay i want to translate from one language to multi language model fantastic how do you want to do it do you want to take it as a, uh, a block of text do you want to take it as a document do you want to take it as a as a web page so what are the different input methods you're trying to so all of those brainstorming that happens uh, with between uh, a person who wants to conduct research and an llm out of it it also the llm also kind of know semantically uh, searches the scholar and and figures out what are the current uh, innovations happening in that particular topic and then again brings back those results to you that hey you want to do a research in this particular translation field and then these are the current uh, innovations happening and things out of it and then you can again pick one or maybe discard that particular direction and then kind of not go about it llm can also give you a scoring uh, on those different research ideas that you have in terms of how novel is this idea what is the feasibility of this idea correct and and based on that uh, you can kind of you know, then uh, conclude that, okay yes this is the a field of topic that i want to uh, i want to pursue out of it so that's a one uh, a, the first phase of this automating a scientific uh, research process then it passes on to another llm uh, which basically takes that as an input and then designs an experiment based on a particular template and also kind of you know, writes a code for that experiment out of it uh, it runs the code it executes that particular experiment and, and gives you a result out of it if the result is not according to what you're looking it can kind of you know update its plan and kind of you know, again go back and and, and, and re execute that experiment once the results are at kind of an expectation level that you have it can also summarizes the findings and also plots uh, the result and uh, in a in a in a in a nice visualization manner it can tabularize uh, uh, different parameters on which result is kind of you know, based or assessed and then there is a third llm that comes into picture which basically takes this uh, findings and then writes uh, uh, a paper which can be uh, presented uh in a in a in a machine learning conference out of it correct and and it uses uh, a predefined template to write this paper uh and it kind of you know gives you all of it so it's a phenomenal kind of you know uh, uh, discovery in my mind once you have the paper then it also have a fourth llm which is trained on uh, on on the papers or abstract that have been submitted to many of these machine learning conferences and uh, it kind of you know, reviews the paper and then gives you a score whether this is an acceptable uh, paper for this particular conference or not so it's a phenomenal uh, kind of you know uh, uh, from my perspective it's, it's it's one of the the very interesting breakthroughs that i have seen in recent times where it democratizes the artificial intelligence research uh, it kind of you know provides uh, you no know, smaller research labs be it an academic or a corporate research labs uh, and kind of you know, gives a shot in the arm to basically create or perform uh, really high quality research there uh, and and they have kind of you know, explained this in, in beautiful pieces so these are some of the example papers that they were able to generate out of uh, ai scientist uh, so here they are using dual skill diffusion uh where you know they are basically using adaptive feature balancing for low dimensional generative models uh this is another one which is style fusion where you can use uh, multi style generation uh, in character level models out of it and and some interesting really really examples out there of course this model 
doesn't is is not kind of uh, foolproof. It is it is, is the first iteration uh, of uh, of their approach, and it has its own limitation out of it. So, you know, one of those things you can assume very well that uh, sometimes kind of you know, LLMs have uh, this tendency to kind of you know, give you. So, let's say in the first phase, which is an idea generation, it could have a tendency to give you a skewed results and, and may not really kind of give you a broad perspective. So again, you have to be mindful about how you kind of set the direction and what you're looking for it. So I think you should start from a broad and then kind of go narrow in that perspective, I would recommend here. The second thing is that sometimes the topic that you're giving it or the idea that you have given for LLM to perform a research discovery process uh, the second element, which is an aider, may not be able to come up with a required experiment or, or the code to basically kind of you know, validate that hypothesis out of it. The third one, it could be possible that while writing the paper, the model hallucinates and kind of you know, maybe goes off limit. Uh, so it's it's good to kind of you know, have uh, checks at each of those three or four stages uh, uh, and then try to see. But I think it's it's a fantastic first discovery from the from the lab, and uh, I'm super excited about uh, the promises it holds uh, for every one of us to kind of you know, understand and push the field of artificial intelligence. So, question from my side, uh, Dushant, this seems really interesting, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, how will humans, right, or teams, uh, uh, be part of this entire process? So, so think of this way, uh, you can, uh, or, or labs can use this to augment their research work. So I have to set up, I have to kind of you know, maybe uh, host this AI scientist in my infrastructure, in my environment. And then like how I interact with any application, be it a web-based or be it a kind of you know, hosted application, where I can, it's, it's think of this as like your hosted, LLM could be a chat GPT, could be a Gemini, but for your research work, correct? Uh, and this has an ability to kind of you know supercharge, like you know, it reduces the uh, uh, time to kind of you know perform research significantly out of it. Second thing, uh, in my perspective, the cost benefit advantage, you know, getting uh, like you know, first of all, doing a PhD is 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 both. Uh, and rightfully so, it's rigorous and time consuming. Uh, but this one kind of you know, gives you sort of an, any a scientist, uh, any scientist could kind of you know, use this to kind of you know, come up with a really high quality research out of it. So for me, I think the one thing I would say is that imagine uh, you have a power of uh, kind of you know, having a top notch research scientist like uh, you know in your lab. So so to me, that's the biggest advantage. Very interesting because, you know, a lot of smaller companies cannot, don't have the time to do research or they don't have the entire pipeline. So, you know, there's so many different components which are interesting and together it's a really interesting proposition, but I see it like kind of democratizing research, right? Yeah. Correct. Really interesting. This is, this is fantastic. Um, and it's super interesting, but here's my question. When, and this is possibly for any point where we start using AI tools in our life and we engage AI in creating content. At what point does it get into cheating in your opinion? Because here's my point. As in, I think it's both ways, right? In academia, the bar is set often uh, intentionally, unattainably challenging or high. Uh, so do you think this is kind of, you know, using tech to challenge that or is it like, or does it not matter? Yeah, so, uh, you, so there are two, three ways to look at it, correct? One, it yeah. definitely, because, okay, let me kind of take a step back out of it. So what could happen when you use this particular discovery? So yeah. one potential thing is that, there are already a lot more research papers that I see on, on variety of journals. And yeah. one other thing is that it can kind of maybe multifolds the Trend. number of papers that are being kind of you know, submitted. And hence, sure. 
the overwhelming the review process itself yeah. correct like a lot of people they have to kind of go through things out of it so that's, yeah. that's definitely one such things out of it the second thing is that it may impact uh it may impact the kind of you no know, work that is very rudimentary or which is very kind of you no know, very process driven in research right. thing it kind of you no know, maybe uh tend to kind of you no know, maybe uh, efficiently kind of you no know, do things out of it so imagine like you know, there's a lot of part of the research process which are very process oriented which are very sure. uh, and it can kind of you no know, take away that trauma and the third thing is that it can also challenge like i would, if if you are like really high top uh, high class researcher you would want to work on the novelty towards it you would want to kind of you know be able right. to have that somebody who you can reason with it correct um, so it it implements uh, a chain of thought kind of you know a uh, mechanism where you could actually reason with uh, some of this llms and then try to kind of you know, get things out so yes it has its challenges as i said this is it, i don't think it is it is uh, uh, it is full proof yet also there are ethical sure. consideration correct can this be used for uh for malicious intentions the research and, and things out of it correct so mm. it can because technology has a two sides of it correct it has yeah. a beneficial it has a, uh, a negative side as well can this be used to kind of you know explore things out of it so all of those questions are valid and and i yeah. think open in discussions out there uh yeah uh, but i think uh, as i said it is it is a first of its kind of you know phase and stages i really hope that uh, like you know people come together and explore this because the one yeah. way to do is that you know you can you can you can push the limit of this is by trying and then doing things out of it okay i can see okay yeah. where does it break what are the things out of it so yeah. Yeah. did i answer your question i'm just trying to kind of you know, yeah no i think it's i think it's really interesting because just like i, I remember there was this um uh, one article i mean i think this has happened in several other instances at this point where somebody submitted a uh, ai generated content for a photography competition or something of that sort right and yes. it won so then it's like okay now what do we do so possibly we're going to maybe in the near future you know somebody submits a paper that is that's used tools like this maybe there's a little bit of asterisk next to it that you know this has been you utilize this tool to help create this that doesn't put you out of the running or in the running of one way or the other it's just an additional factor to consider uh as you absolutely rightly said maybe not different from when one would use an asterisk let's say if you are uh with google research because that implies a certain resource bandwidth which somebody else doesn't have so i think you know this is tangentially also helping highlight other parts of the conversation which is what are the resources you need to pull off something like this and then what happens when you start leveling the field and then was it cheating before or was it is it cheating now and cheating is not the right word but yeah no i think this is fantastic and I, yeah tldr i need to see it pushed to the limits and then see what happens and one of the interesting conversations here right sir and is uh whether it's computer generated images or videos or whatever right how do you how do you yeah. kind of know that it's computer generated right like maybe a watermark yeah. or something so yeah ties into that whole debate right of how do you yeah. know that it's ai generated versus or ai assisted yeah. so yeah. super interesting sure so yeah conversation and i think uh, at this point of time as i said this is like a very early phases of ai though as much as we would like to believe that ai is kind of you know really taking over everything yeah. uh, in the industry this is like a very very early nascent stages yeah. of ai where i would argue that they still need to prove like really strong uh, so these are all exciting uh results correct yeah. but for it to become a norm i think you know it there are yeah. there are other things that we need to be happen so i think one thing i would say like right now we no longer think twice before uh using tools to do things like let's say if i want to write a paper i there are already tools like latex and 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 bunch of others which allows me to write it in a nice format correct okay. now why it is helpful because it kind of you no know, takes it absorb the complexity of 
the process and help me focus on the know-how or help me focus on this thing. So I think AI would probably do the same thing out of it, uh, where people will become more transparent about its usage, where the regulation will become mature to come up with the guidelines where you can use, where you cannot use out of it. Yeah. Uh, but again, I'm an eternal optimist, so I might have kind of, <laughs> uh, kind of have a blind spot on some of those things there. Uh, but interesting perspective. Just to kind of yeah. give you a thing, there are also interesting research happening in that area where some of the things like watermark or some like you know the synth ID again yeah. uh, pretty interesting yeah. uh, research done by Google folks there where you can assign a synthetic ID to a particular creation so that you know you could identify okay this is this is either done by AI itself or it is done in combination or collaboration with AI and human. So, yeah, exciting path ahead. Yeah, yeah absolutely.